basically when you download it from the app store basically just a very simple application you can see here you basically click a button to install motion templates metadata view and LUTs and then you can go and launch Final Cut what it adds is a workflow extension so if we click the little workflow extension button we can see here we've got broad toolbox so all I need to do is click that it brings up our fancy workflow extension and you can just drag and drop brawl files from finder or i can click this import files button do that i've got a bunch of stuff here so i'll just select a bunch of uh footage and you can see here we have the brawl footage i can scrub through it's really good performance we're using the um the black magic raw sdk so it's using the same um code as resolve and edit ready and color finale transcoder um, so it's really zippy. I can play um, and I can see all the metadata. So let's have a look at this surfing footage. I can just adjust the exposure. You can see it's updating here. Um, I might change the gamma. Let's change it to custom. And then once I change it to custom, I get all the custom gamma control. So we'll just make it a bit more saturated. And you basically use this area to do all your sort of setup. You can see lots of metadata here and you can change the columns. So for example, um, I can scroll across and see the lens type and the crop size. And if you use the metadata within the, the Blackmagic cameras, you can see the good takes and the takes and the scenes and that sort of thing. And then basically the way um, Broad Toolbox works is to keep things simple and performant, we just rip out the audio as WAV files and send that to Final Cut as WAV files. It just simplifies things. So we'll choose an audio folder and we'll just save all the audio there. So I've just got a folder called audio. I'll save that there. And then we're pretty much ready to send it all to Final Cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the prepare brawl files. And what this is doing behind the scenes is creating all those audio files. Now it says it's successfully processed and I can drag the green icon next to the button to the Final Cut library. Um, so I basically have this green button here and I will drag it across and you can see now it's changed into a, a library icon. I'll drag it to our library and all our clips are there. Now the reason it's this weird drag and drop sort of thing is again, just to get around sandboxing issues. Um, this workflow extension touch anything else on the file system. So it can't access things on the desktop. It can only access things that you need. So the drag and drop thing just makes life so much easier. And now I have all my brawl clips here and you can see it's all here. I'll turn on hover. We can see it's very performant. I can just hover through all this sort of stuff. And there we go. So in this case, I've brought them all in as synchronized clips. There is an option in Brawl Toolbox. You can bring them in as multi-cams instead. Um, and basically, if I sort of just double click on one of these, we can see what we're doing behind the scenes. So behind the scenes, we have a audio track and this is just regular audio. If I go and go um, reveal in Finder, we can see just a regular WAV file, nothing fancy there. It's been pulled apart from the brawl file it's just a regular audio file so that's good and this is where sort of the magic's happening we've basically got you can't see any thumbnails here but we can sort of scroll through and we can see our footage this is actually just a very boring custom solid it's exactly the same as this custom solid here we can change the color of it if we wanted to because it's literally just a custom solid. So I'll just make it red so you can sort of see. And now it updates the thumbnail there. But what we're doing is we're just using this generator as sort of a placeholder and we apply a broad toolbox effect to it. And the workflow extension does all the all this to make it work. We can now click show parameters and we have full access to all the parameters we had in the workflow extension. So we can adjust the ISO and the exposure. One thing you can do, which you can't even do in DaVinci Resolve is I can keyframe this. So if I add a keyframe there and I'll make it dark again, we can see here, as you'd expect, the keyframes are updating in the inspector and also in the footage. 
we can do the same thing as we did in that workflow extension where I'm going to change the gamma to black magic design custom. And now I have full access to those custom gamma controls as well. So again, I'll keyframe the saturation. We'll start here and maybe gets here and we get completely desaturated. And there we go. So you get full sort of raw controls. You also get, if we jump into the, um, the metadata view, there's a broad toolbox metadata view. If I go back to this clip in the, um, the browser, the synchronized clip has all the metadata you could ever want from a camera. Um, depending on the, the type of camera, there's all different stuff in here. Um, so you get all the full metadata from the Blackmagic camera. Um, and then, so we never really need to get into the synchronized clip or the multicam clip, unless we want to adjust raw, uh, the raw parameters. But generally speaking, like most people, maybe what they'll be changing is the, um, they might change it, the gamma and the, the gamut, and then they'll just do their color grading as they would normally in um, Final Cut Pro. So if I just create a new timeline, so I'll just create projects. So I'll just do 25 because we are Australian. So I'll just go tests and we'll just do an Ultra HD one. I'll just bring in all my footage. And we can see here in the timeline, very performant. Does it require the M1 or M2 chip or does it work on Intel? No, it works on Intel. We've got people that are testing it on old 15 inch Intel MacBook Pros. And, wow. Um, the only issue we ever have had so far is there's one user that has a, um, a trash can Mac Pro with dual D500s, I think. And he has some glitches, but those old trash cans are so notorious for overheating and destroying GPUs. I'm assuming that he's just got dodgy hardware. No, it works great on Intel's, works fine on Apple Silicon. Obviously, as you can see in the frame size, we've got some 12K clips, we've got some 5K clips, um, 6K clips, and yeah, it's all working really well. And the benefit of Brawler is that I can, if we go back to the workflow extension, I'll just bring in some something else um we can adjust the decode quality so at the moment it's doing an automatic one so it's basically because i know i was going to work in hd um i said hd and it will sort of pick the best decoding for that hd delivery um but i can also do automatic ultra hd or full or half a quarter so if you're just doing offline editing and you're going to send it to a proper colorist to do a grade or whatever you could just edit in eighth quality and it's essentially like proxy quality, depending on, I mean, if you're shooting eighth quality and you've shot 12 K working on a HD timeline, it probably will look fantastic anyway. So you can, if you've got a really slow machine, you could just work in eighth quality. And then when it comes time to render, one of the um, cool things we added was there's in here in the um, inspector, there's global settings. So we can click force full quality, um, decode and then every clip in final cut will render at full quality and same with eighth if your computer's struggling for whatever reason you're doing lots of motion effects we can just force eighth decode quality and um it'll render out in at that sort of decode quality now chris have you heard from black magic about this plugin like i've been chatting with black magic and apple a lot about this because obviously there was lots of questions the black magic api is all in c I've never coded in C before. <laughs> I've never done anything with metal before. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of learning and a lot of, uh, Hey guys, what is, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this, but metal does something, something. I need to get this into final cut somehow. Could you tell? <laughs> so yes, I've been chatting a lot with, um, black magic's developer support is awesome. They're all based in Melbourne as well. So they're literally just down the road. So they're in my time zone. So that works really well. Blackmagic developer support's really great and the um, the Brawl product managers are really great. So yeah, Blackmagic great, gives great support. And Apple has been really helpful as well, but obviously they're um, on the other side of the world.